Hello everyone and welcome back to a, another tutorial on RPG Developer Bot Team. Today, uh, you can see I've done quite a bit of work. There's no more 2D characters. Um, let me show you what I've got so far. These are uh, 3D models that were provided by Kay. Um, you can get his, I'll link his Patreon on the bottom. Uh, these are great little free models. Uh, start. So they have a little HPs above their head. Um, you can be the mage. He's got taught to the mage. And same thing, attacking. I gave the enemies HP. We have bombs. That work. Uh, the range is about two and yeah all right let's get back let's close this down all right save as always um change a little bit uh you don't have to worry about this this is just this title um set up the stats is just you're teleporting when you do the title and whatnot don't have to worry about that uh we do change the current player uh which i'll show you there too and I move the HUD to here too, since it should never really be changing. Uh, the player attack, it did change a little bit. Um, since we have a caster now, you have to turn on the casting part. Uh, you would use this too if you're using just one player and you wanted to have like casting spells and whatnot. You would still want to use this. Uh, if you didn't have like multiple player types to swap between, you would just change the current player to like say current uh, type of attack. And whatnot but for this example we're using current player for uh swapping between the mage and the uh, the knight right here is this just as one is going to be the knight and then two is going to be the mage um over into the database uh we gave the enemy a 3d model of call him an orc um default motion nothing changed here uh, walking, it's very interesting uh, because it's almost like a pseudo um, pathfinding when you use the approach. Um, I decided to start using that instead of like using a walk to player because it seems like it's a little bit more smoother. Um, uh, I added a couple more switches for the melee hit and spell hits as well. Um, the attack, I've kind of moved it all over into a their uh, animation pages as well. As well as their hits, I'll show you in a second. Um, <clears throat> super simple damage formula. All it is is the damage is the attack times four uh, minus the defense multiplied by two. Then you add a modifier, and you can change all that here as well. Um, this is brand new. This is going to be your damage numbers. Uh, this is for the damage numbers for the player. There's no actual change like player HP. So we had to kind of do a, a workaround, which is actually really cool. Um, all it's doing is changing the target through the damage numbers and then decreasing the HP to here and then whatnot. Um, and then going that, doing the motion and then waiting and then turning the attack off. Um, for when you want to detect a hit from the, the player's sword, um, I just have the animation that's going to turn on to them there then you can start your damage calculations it's the exact same thing um for the damage numbers we're just using the damage value subtracting it from the points from the the cast but you don't really have to worry about this too much because um this is the main thing you need to worry about is the hp because that's what we use to set up and that's what we're uh pointing towards um when we're tracking their hp uh the actual damage values taken away from the event right here is just showing the damage numbers. And I'll show you a little trick with that soon. Um, this is just the changing the color red that was already here before. Um, we set in color. Uh, same thing for the spell. The exact same thing, literally. It's just we have a fire effect. Uh, the dead didn't change. This changed a little bit. Um, I added the spell name, the bomb name, and then we have HP percent calculation that needed to be done because we have a heart display now. So it's really cool. Um, it's just an image that you'll be able to use. You can use it or you can put your own. 
So this would be 100%, 90%, and so on all the way down. So what it's saying is uh, when this con when this is greater than 90, we're going to show 100%, and then if not, then we're going to do 80, and then we keep going through the if nots until we get to the end. Um, motion condition changed a little bit. We added some ray casting. Um, and I also made it to where they will only be attacking if they're in length of their attack length. Um, so when the distance to player is greater than or equal to, my bad, to the attack length, uh, then we're going to check these two ray casts right here. Uh, this is thanks to my friend uh, Ots Otzenford um, right here. So we got 30 degrees and then negative 30 degrees. So it's both sides. Um, it'll check to see, oops, sorry. It'll check to see if, uh, if one is next to it, then we're going to turn their walking off. If not, they can walk. Same for the bow section. And for this, this is just saying if, uh, they're right where they need to be, they're, we're going to stop the walking. Um, I also added the, uh, spell hit and the melee hit. Face player didn't change. Or did it? Why is there two of them? Okay, we're going to delete that. We don't need that. All right. Uh, to set player hits, we changed it up a little bit. I just cleaned it more. Uh, there's no damage calculation here anymore. It's just turning the switch on and then going to the hit sword. Because the melee hit right here. Um, to tap player spell. Uh, super simple. This is just looking for uh, if it's less the distance between the spell uh, player spell to the enemy is less than one. We're going to also check to see if we're still casting, meaning the event isn't gone. Um, then we're going to turn on the spell hit uh, bomb hit. Super simple as well. Uh, when the bomb is explode is on, which I'll show you here in a second. Uh, we're also checking the distance to the bomb. This is where you're going to change the uh, radius of your bomb but you'll also want to change the radius in the uh, subgraphic to reflect it as well. So you'll have to kind of fiddle around with that. Um, just a little effect on the event whenever they get hit. Same thing. More damage calculations. You can do ca actual calculations, but all I'm doing is just doing a flat 20 from the enemy's HP. And then we set their color. Uh, tat player. Uh, like I said, I changed it a little bit. We're making sure they're not getting hit, and then we're going to assign the attack length of three, dividing it by two, making it 1.5. Uh, so when the content of the distance to player is equal to or less than the attack length, um, we're going to wait about two seconds, then attack, start the attack switch, and then start the attack timer again as well. Nothing really changed here. Um, I just added a zero wait second, so that way it can uh, last a little bit longer. This is just a swap, um, nothing really fancy. It's just asking if you want to change the, the uh, major thief, or major knight, sorry. Uh, so the bomb, so once it explodes, it's going to subtract from your bombs that you already have in your, um, uh, or once it deploys, it's going to subtract. Um, then it's going to play a blend key for shrink, which is just shrinking the wick. We're going to wait three seconds because it's the, the exact time it takes for this to end. Uh, about. Then wait another point two to make it go invisible. Then we have the event or the uh, lot destruction particle effect. Um, wait, wait about nine seconds, point nine seconds. It's usually about like 1.5. So I'd wait about one, uh, point nine seconds and then we're going to delete the event. So on deletion, we're going to turn on the bomb explode um, uh, switch. We're going to wait about 0.2 seconds and we're going to turn it off. This is our window for when they can get damage. Um, this is for the checking if the player is in range. We're waiting about 0.1. Well, we don't even need to do that. We can delete that. Um, oh, no, we don't. We need that. I'm sorry. Uh, the damage numbers are, are finicky if you don't do it this way. Um, so you need this point zero or the zero weight. Uh, <clears throat> for some reason, it'll calculate it so fast that it's just going to keep taking your damage um all we're doing here is just checking the distance to the player from the bomb uh that's all this uh seed call is doing uh then we're checking that the bomb explode is on from here so once the bomb explodes that's here we're checking to see 
if it's on and if it's on we're going to do the hit animation and also i put a note here say anytime you see a change event in hp note that it's for ch showing damage make sure to also decrease the player enemy hp as well that's very important because if you're just decreasing the event hp it's not going to decrease the actual enemy's hp just remember that event hp is going to be for damage numbers um so this is just the player's damage number. So we're decreasing by four. You can make it whatever. I just made it four for debugging purposes. Uh, we're swapping to the damage numbers. Then we're decreasing by four, swapping back to this event. And then we're gonna turn off the explode. Okay, super simple. Um, player damage numbers is actually really cool. Like I said, we can't show the damage numbers on a player directly. So what we do is I have an event that follows the player always. Uh, it's right there. I don't know why I don't need to wait to complete on. It's always going to be going. Um, and what it is, it's so the key to having damage numbers show properly um, is you need to have these this value like insanely high or as high as it goes. Um, so that way you can still play your dead animations. Um, because if you don't and you link it to the HP that the event already is, uh, it's just going to disappear. It disappears and, it, and it, you have no like fun animations or like drops or anything. Like you see how she falls and everything. You won't have that. Um, uh, P attack. Nothing changed here. I don't think. Let me double check. No, nothing changed here. Um, still the same. Uh, P spell. Super simple. Just like before. Um, let's see. Here, let's make that the motion. Um, it's walking, sits, you can, this is to be the length that, how long you want the spell to last. Um, once it walks, it's going to delete itself. And then once it's created, we're turning on player casting. That means it's, we're casting and we're allowed to give damage. Uh, this, um, don't worry about this. Actually, we're going to delete that. Um, cause it, for some reason it was finicky when I was trying to mess with that. So we don't have to worry about that. Um, but yeah, uh. That's pretty much it. Uh, if you have any questions or are stuck on anything, please make sure to reach out to me in the official Discord, or you can also private message me in my, uh, on Discord as well. Um, but yeah, I thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.